All right, welcome back. Sean Leslie in for John McComb for the remainder of this week. 8.51 on a Tuesday morning. Beautiful day out there. Now, we've uh, talked a few times this week about drones interfering with forest firefighting operations. It's happened twice in the Kelowna area in recent weeks. Uh, The latest one, suspending forest firefighting efforts from the air anyway for five hours because the forest firefighting aircraft could not enter the area because of this unidentified drone. Now, as far as I know, they still haven't caught the person responsible. As I say, that's the second time it's happened. Other issues raised around drones include uh, safety around uh, airports, even peeping toms. Of course, with cameras affixed to a lot of these things. So what are the rules around drones? Uh, Let's talk to Greg Rafter. Greg's a litigation lawyer who also practices employment, intellectual property, and transportation law with Bowton Law. Bowton Law, CKNW's legal analyst for 2015. And a reminder, this discussion does not constitute legal advice. Greg, hi, how are you this morning? I'm very well, thank you. Good to talk to you. So, very simple question. Are there rules about private operations of drones? Uh, well, yes, there is. Um, Canada is actually a leader in regulating the use of drones. They recognized early on that it was going to be a growing uh, mode of access to the air, and since 1996 have had some regulations in place because of the incredible incredible growth of the use of drones so that's going to be overhauled but for the time being there are rules in place and for when you say private use if it's that means anything that's not for work or research uh, and if you have a drone that's under 35 kilograms which is a pretty weighty beast yes uh, you don't need any permission you don't need any permission at all you anybody can go buy one of these things fly it around that's right. The, you're, you are governed by the Canadian air regulations because they're, all, they're considered aircraft. But as far as the model car, uh, car, category is concerned, uh, all you need to do is fly it in a way that it doesn't harm uh, or pose a risk to aviation safety. So what do you think when you see these stories about forest firefighting operations having to be stopped because there's a drone in the area? Well, I think it's likely uh, recreational users that just don't understand the uh, the nature of the work that's being done there and the danger that that they uh, that they pose to these aircraft that are flying fairly close to the ground uh, in a very busy area. I mean, even a a small drone that's that five or ten kilograms, if that strikes an aircraft, that's going to cause serious damage. So, okay, so uh, there are rules, but people just aren't aware of them. How do do we fix that? Uh, Should there be some kind of mandatory, I don't know, like a a quick training course if you're going to buy a drone? Uh, Well, with some of the larger ones, you'd think that that was going to be the case. but uh, And and there are going to be, as I say, the rules are going to be tightened up somewhat starting later this year, uh, where for certain operations you will require... A, a pilot certificate where will require you to show proficiency, you'll have to pass a written exam, those kinds of things. Uh, even now, uh, commercial operators that use a special flight operations certificate have to have certain training for their operators, and that is mandated. Okay. Uh, w- what are the penalties? What, what could happen to you if you do break the rules and, and you are caught? Uh, commercial operators can be subject to fines up to $25,000. Private individuals can be subject up to uh, fines of $3,000. $3,000 for, for the private. Right, but there, are, there may be other, other uh, pieces of legislation in play that I'm not familiar with that may subject someone that endangers uh, firefighters uh, in the wildfire. There may be uh, regulations there that uh, they would be subject to. It's always wise to investigate that before you go off on a, off on a tangent. Um, oh, okay, uh, and, and maybe we're getting off uh, on a tangent here myself, but uh, I guess a lot of it comes down to enforcement and, and catching people, and uh, how do you do that when you're talking about drones? Well, that's the problem, and yeah. if you watch the, uh, the Vancouver police officers speaking about it the other day, uh, the smaller aircraft have no registration requirements, so there's really no way to identify them unless you can visually track them to where they're landed. Now, uh, there was also a story, and there have been a couple over the last few years, uh, uh, Greg, about um, uh, drones uh, maybe being used to sort of peep into people's apartments, high-rise apartments. There was a lady sunbathing topless, uh, she thought she had privacy with, uh, I think it was a fence there, but this one drone got up high enough that it would have had a, a, an unobstructed view down to where she was uh, sunbathing topless. Is that against the law? Well, it is in certain circumstances. If uh, Again, the, the Vancouver police uh, officer explained it quite well the other day that 
people have an expectation of privacy on their balconies. If they're sunbathing out in public, then maybe they don't have that same expectation of privacy, and a drone that took a picture of them there uh, is likely going to get away with it. However, if they're taking pictures in through the window of their house, that may be violation of their privacy rights. What? Okay, now, now uh, what, what we've been presuming and talking about the uh, the drone over the forest fire in the Okanagan the other day is, is presuming someone has some kind of... Uh, camera on there, a GoPro or something like that. If they go then online and say on Facebook or, or YouTube or something like that and post a video of that fire, um, can police use that? Can they legitimately use that to try to identify who did that? I would expect they can. That's really not my area of practice, but I would think that that would be evidence of if they can trace back to who posted the pictures, that's certainly going to put them on the right trail. Um, I wanted to ask you about this as well. Pete McMartin writing in the Vancouver Sun today, uh, talking about the morons who are, who are doing this and interfering uh, with, you know, with this kind of uh, vital activity, putting out forest fires. Uh, he, he raises the possibility, he says, well, yeah, absolutely. But he says, why don't we ban the sale of drones, uh, only allow them for legitimate commercial reasons? Why should the average person with little or no training, maybe little or no knowledge of the rules as they stand now or as they're about to be changed, well, why should they have the right to buy a drone at all? Well, I think it's uh, it's a matter of learning. It's a matter of public education. I mean, people have been flying model aircraft for decades and decades. True. And, uh, and occasionally there's problems with those. But generally, um, people learn what they're supposed to do and not do. Uh, there's a Model Aircraft Association of Canada that has a set of guidelines that modelers are supposed to follow. So uh, banning them outright, I'm not certain that would be the case. Maybe more training for drones over a particular weight that pose a greater hazard. Maybe that's the way to go. Yeah, well, I mean, you have to you have to have some modicum, I think, uh, of training or at least knowledge to get you know even a boating license, right? So why not with drones? Well, when you're flying a 35 kilogram um, uh, drone for recreational purposes and you don't need any training, um, and the guidelines are to fly safely. We just have to hope that people follow that. Great, great to talk to you. Uh, how can people find out more, by the way, or find out about Bone Law? Well, they can call me, but if they want to go online to look for it, Transport Canada's website, which is uh, tc.gc.ca, has lots of videos and, and easy-to-read information for uh, anyone that has questions. Great, great to talk to you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Greg Rafter, litigation lawyer. He practices uh, employment, intellectual property, and transportation law with Bouton Law, CKNW's on-air legal analyst for 2015. A reminder that our discussion does not constitute legal advice. You can find out more at BoutonLaw.com or uh, via the CKNW 